I believe that if we want to find out truly what this core identity we have within us is, and we, and we want to learn how to identify it in other people, we have to create the ideal day. We have to identify what the perfect day in our lives would be. See, typically it's like, well, what do you want your ideal life to be? And it's like, well, I live in this big house, and I got a Ferrari and all that stuff, and that's, so it's okay, but it's the individual day that holds the key to what you truly want, what we all truly want. When I say you, I'm not like preaching at you at all. Like, forget me, you know, it's us. We're all collective. So here it is. A lot of, it's a lot of buildup leading up to this one question, right? Good Lord, I've been here for like three hours. When I told you I did this exercise in September of 2005, the entire exercise was to simply answer this one question. If there were no limitations or consequences, what would your perfect average day look like? If there were no limitations or consequences, what would your perfect average day look like? Not that heavy, right? Now we're into the dangerously new age stuff. But we are no longer going to talk about weird conceptual heavy stuff, which is cool. Um, okay, language is very powerful. So let me dissect the question for you. When I say limitations, I mean if we had no financial, geographic, health uh, limitations or limiting people. So if like a perfect day, your idea of a perfect day is you wake up on the beach in Hawaii and you live in Macon, Georgia, well, let's pretend that there are no geographic locations, right? Let's pretend that we've got all the money we could possibly want. If you can't, you know, if, you're, if your perfect day is to, to wake up and go surfing and, you know, you've got a broken leg, let's pretend that your leg is not broken, right? Easy stuff. If you have limit, limiting people in your life and your perfect day is to be away from those limiting people, let's just say you got away from them. Pew. Consequences is important. That's stuff that could get, uh, get you into trouble. So, it might be tempting to say, my perfect day involves waking up, drinking a liter of vodka, going and racing my Formula One car to be followed by a cocaine binge with a, a, a truckload of hookers. That will kill you. Okay, so I don't think, realistically, that is your perfect average day. All right? And finally, I use the word average. It's very important that you really get the language right in this. You could do it every day and not get sick of it or get killed. Average, everyday stuff. Now, you might be thinking, well, never mind. I should just show you this. So, it's like a 400-part question, really. <laughs> but it's still two easy steps, all right? <laughs> Step one, build a giant house. Step two, walk through the door, you know. Um, when you think of this, this perfect day, it's important not to think about stuff, all right? We're going for experience. That's why the question is framed around a day. If you say life, you think about stuff, right? We all do. You think about the big mansions and the cars and the jets and all that stuff. So where would you live in this perfect day? You don't have to, like, write all this stuff down. It's normal questions, right? What would your house look like? Would it be clean inside? What would it smell like? What time would you wake up? What would you do in the morning? What would you think about in the morning? What would you say? What are your first words of the day? What are your first thoughts of the day? It's vitally important to drill down to the seemingly mundane, weird stuff. And when you do this exercise, I don't expect you to do it now because it, it took me, I'm a little bit slow, but it took me like four hours to do it. I had like literally, I don't know, 11 or 12 pages was the answer to the question. What would you have for breakfast? Mundane, but still, you got a certain thing you like to eat, don't like to eat, place you like to go. I, went, I got as specific as to, to drill down into mundane stuff like what I was thinking about when I took the children to school and what I was thinking about when I dropped them off and what I was thinking about when I got home. The more detailed you get about this, the more clear you become and the more profound your outcome will be. Where would you spend the first half of your day? You know, would you go to yoga? Right? 
That's what my wife does every day. Yoga. I've got to say, I'm a big fan. I like that. It's a lot of benefits of that thing, you know. Like, hey, wow, this is great. Um, well, I mean, she could go to wrestling or something, you know. I guess maybe that would be cool, too, you know, what we think about it. Um, what would you have for lunch? Seriously, like, what would you have for lunch? Who would you eat with? What would your friends be like? All right, when I answered this question, I rewrote the, the behavior of my friends. I believe the specific answer was, we have a healthy lunch at a good place. It's got fresh food that we enjoy. Our conversation is not about idle gossip, but more of a celebration of the fun we have had earlier in the day and, the la and since the last time we saw each other. So what will you talk about? What are your friends like? The perfect day. Like, so imagine another way to frame this question is if whatever you write down, you have to live that day, every day for the rest of your life. It's another way to look at it, okay? What would you do for personal fulfillment? Okay? I, I, I've tried, and um, it's, it's, you, can't, you can't screw off all the time. You'll end up wanting to do something for personal fulfillment. What life purpose would you strive towards? That's a big one. Try to answer it honestly, because you might find, like I did, your answer is dramatically different from what all of your energy and time is focused on right now. If it is, you've got a serious mismatch, and that blows. It's going to come across in every presentation you do. What would your business be? What time would you start work? What would you actually do at work? All right. For mine, it was coming up with evil schemes. The, the use of the word evil there is not really very... Uh, very nice sounding, so I'd define an evil scheme as just something fun, I said in jest. What are your clients like? What's your relationship like with your spouse and your family? I wrote mine down. What do you and your kids talk about? What's that like? Not like we like each other, but why? What fun stuff do you do? What do you like about each other? What does your spouse like about you? What do your children appreciate within you? You, got, you have to live this day every day, forever. Every day. Just imagine Osama's got the button on the destroy the world, or his finger on the destroy the world button. If you deviate from this day at all, he's going to press it. Okay? So you've got to live it every day. <laughs> Why I put this under the really big stuff, I don't know. I guess that's a reflection of where my mind is, right? Dinner is family stuff there, right? I mean, it is my house, so... Would you have dinner with your family? Would you go out? Whatever. What would you like to eat? Who would you eat with? What would you talk about? What would you do at night? Who would you do it with? I think we might have just uh, had a little Beavis and Butthead moment there. <laughs> I said, who would you do it with at night? But, you know, I mean, what would you... <laughs> and, hey, like, speaking of that, you don't have to show this to anyone, by the way, but if the whole, you know, if that... The answer is dramatically different from your current situation. You should put it down. You don't have to show it with anybody. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm going to show you some of mine, though. <laughs> Where would you do it? <laughs> what would your thoughts be as you went to sleep? That was a big one for me. What are you going to think about? Those last conscious moments of the day. Where is your mind? Where is it now? You know, go to bed worried about stuff? You go to bed thinking about where the next sales come from? Or... You know, what's going to happen if Google slaps you? That blows. That's no fun. I've done that. It's awful.